All right, let's do a quick example of the mouse in chop. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna create the animation that you see in the background of my touch designer screen here with the sphere that is reacting to the, the mouse cursor position as well as the mouse clicks. So every time I click the mouse, the sphere grows. So let's make this example right now. So I'm gonna start by double clicking in the empty canvas area here. And then in the OP create dialog, I'm just going to click on the chops category. And from chops, I'm gonna find the mouse in operator, which is right here. So we're just going to click on the mouse in operator and place that somewhere in the canvas area here. Okay, so now that I've placed the mouse in operator, you can see that we have two channels in this operator. We have TX and we have TY. So as we move the mouse in the X direction, the TX value is going to change. And as we move the mouse in the Y direction, the TY value is going to change. So what I'm gonna do now is create an object that is going to react to these values changing. So I'm gonna double click on the empty canvas area to open the OP create dialog. And then I'm gonna click on the SOP category. And now I'm going to click on sphere. So just click on sphere and place that somewhere in the empty canvas area. And now that we have our sphere, we're going to add a couple of operators here to make this sphere appear in the background of touch designer so that we can clearly see what we're working with. Now that we have our sphere operator, what I'm gonna do is right click on the output area of the sphere. So just right click on those two light blue dots there. And then once you right clicked on the output area of sphere, we have the OP create dialog. And from there, we're going to click on the comp category. So just click on comp. And then from comp, we want to click on the geometry operator. So click on geometry and place geometry somewhere to the right of sphere. And now that we have our geometry, let's go ahead and add a couple of operators to render this geometry. So we're gonna double click on the empty canvas area and from the OP create dialog, let's make sure we are in the comp category and from comp, let's just click on camera. So click on camera and place the camera somewhere above the geometry operator that we have. So we have sphere, geo, and cam. So we have a camera looking at our geometry, but now we need a light operator to shine light onto our geometry. So let's double click the empty canvas area. And then from the comp category, once again, let's just click on light. So click on light and place that light somewhere to the right of your camera operator. And now that we have our camera and our light, let's place one more operator to render this geometry. So I'm gonna double click on the empty canvas area here. And then from the top category, just click on the top category and we're gonna click on the render operator. So click on render and place render somewhere to the right of Geo. All right, now we have our shape being rendered in Touch Designer. Last but not least, let's click on the display button of this render operator in the bottom right corner of the render operator to display this in the background. So if we zoom out, now we have a nice big sphere in the background of Touch Designer. Let's make that a little bit smaller. So let's go to the sphere operator right here. And once the sphere operator is selected, we're gonna look at the parameters of the sphere in the top right corner. And then I'm just gonna click on the radius parameter of that sphere. And I just hold down the mouse button and then I'm gonna move the mouse to the left just to dial that radius of the sphere down a little bit to about 0.2. And now we have a much smaller sphere. So now we can use this chop that we placed, this mouse in chop, we can use that to move this sphere around as the mouse moves around. So let's do that right now. So now we're gonna use these TX and TY channels of this mouse in chop, and we're gonna use those channels to feed into the parameters of our sphere, and particularly the uh, center parameter, which is basically the location of the sphere on the screen. So what we're gonna do is click on the viewer active button of the mouse in chop. So just click on that little button in the bottom right corner of the mouse in chop operator. So click on viewer active, and then we can see that when we hover over one of these channels of mouse in, it turns green. So now that the viewer active button is turned on for the mouse in operator, I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna make sure that our sphere operator is selected. And we know that our sphere operator is selected when the border around that is green, just like this. So with our sphere operator selected, we can see the parameters of the sphere. And what we're gonna do now is simply hover over the TX channel 
and we're going to click and drag that and we're going to drop that onto the x value of our center parameter in our sphere so let's go ahead and drop that channel onto this x value of the parameter center in our sphere so just drop that x value right there and then you want to click on export chop and now when we move the mouse to the left or to the right you can see the sphere reacts to that mouse movement so at this point, we have successfully made it so the X value of the mouse in operator is actually modifying something in our touch designer project. But when we move the mouse up and down, nothing is happening because we have not done the same thing for the Y value of this mouse in operator. So what we're going to do now is just do the same thing for TY that we did for TX, but we're going to do that on the Y value of the center parameter for our sphere. So just hover over that TY channel of our mouse in operator. So just click and hold and drag that TY channel onto the Y value of our center parameter in our sphere operator. So just click and drag and drop that onto the Y value of our center parameter. And then we're gonna click on export chop. And now when we move the mouse up and down, our sphere reacts to that mouse movement. So just a quick recap, when we move left or right, our sphere moves left and right, and we move up and down, and our sphere moves up and down. So we have our sphere reacting to our mouse movement. Now let's make it so the size of the sphere grows when we click the mouse button. So let's do that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the viewer active button or the mouse in operator. So just click on that viewer active button to turn that off. And now that that viewer active button is turned off, we can click on the mouse in operator to select that. So just select that mouse in operator. And then when I zoom out, we're gonna look at the parameters of this mouse in operator in the top right corner. So in the parameters of this mouse in operator, in the left button parameter, I'm just going to give this a name. So I'm just going to click on that empty field and I'm going to type in the letter L and that's all. So we just basically gave this left button channel a name. And now when we zoom out, you can see that now there are three channels in our mouse in operator instead of two. We have TX, TY, and L. So now when I click the left mouse button, you can see that that actually activates that left channel that we just turned on. So I'm clicking the left mouse button and that channel actually produces an output. Now we're gonna use this new left channel to modify the radius of our sphere. So let's do that right now. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna turn back on the viewer active button of our mouse in operator. And once that viewer active button is turned on, what we're gonna do we're just going to select the sphere operator so that the parameters for that are visible in the top right corner. And we're going to use this left mouse button channel of that mouse in operator. We're going to drop that onto the radius parameter of our sphere. Let's go ahead and click and hold and drag on that left channel that we created in this mouse in operator. So just click and hold and then drag and you want to drop that onto the word radius in our sphere operator parameters. So just drop that onto the word radius so that all three X, Y, and Z values of this parameter are being dropped onto. So drop that onto the word radius and then click on export chop. And now if we click the left mouse button, you can see that that's what happens there. So the radius of our sphere is going from zero to one but it's not going anywhere in between. So let's fix that right now. So it kind of grows and shrinks instead of just appear or disappear. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna add a new operator here, a new chop called lag. So let's go ahead and turn off the viewer active button for our mouse in operator. So just turn off that viewer active button. And then once that is turned off, we're going to right click on the output of our mouse in operator. And then once we right click on that, we see the OP create dialog and from the chop category, we're going to click on lag. So just click on lag from the chop category and then place the lag somewhere to the right of the mouse in operator, right about there, give it some space. 
So now if you compare the output of our mouse in operator and the output of our lag operator, when we click the mouse button, you can see that the mouse in operator is still going exactly from zero to one instantly. But if we look at the output of our lag operator, that is kind of growing and shrinking. But you can see that when we click our mouse, the, um, the sphere is not reacting to the lag parameter. So what we're going to do, we're going to click the viewer active button on our lag operator. So click that viewer active button on the lag operator. I'm going to zoom out. Now we're going to click the sphere operator to select that. And we're going to hover over that left channel of our lag operator right here. So we're going to click and hold and drag that left channel of our lag operator onto the onto the radius of our sphere. So just click and hold and drag that left panel of the lag operator and drop that onto the radius of our sphere, onto the word radius, and then click on export chop. So now if we click the mouse, that grows and shrinks instead of just going from zero to one. So that's working as intended, but there's one change I wanna make so that the sphere actually still has some shape even when we're not clicking the mouse button. So let's do that now. What we're gonna do now is hover over this line connecting mouse to lag, and we're just going to hover over that line, and then we're gonna right click on that line connecting from mouse to lag, and then we're just gonna click on insert operator. And now from the chops category, we're going to click on the math operator. So just click on that operator, place that in between mouse and lag, and now the math operator should be selected already after you place that. So I'm going to zoom out and we're going to look at the parameters for this math operator because we're going to change something in the Molt Add tab. So click on that Molt Add tab right about here. And what we're going to do first is we're going to change the pre-add value. So what we're going to do is click on this slider here and just click that and drag it a little bit to about 0.2 or so. And when, now you can see that the sphere has a size even when we're not clicking the mouse button. So if I zoom out and I click, you can see that sphere grows quite a bit. When we click the mouse button, it's responding to our X and Y. And now if we wanted to, we could keep messing with this math operator. Like for example, we could change the multiply value in this math operator. We could change that to about 0.5. And that way our sphere doesn't grow quite so much when we click the mouse button. So now it's a more subtle kind of reaction to when we click the mouse button. So that's about it for this mouse in operator part of this tutorial. And just a quick recap, we have our mouse in operator that is taking input from the mouse in the X, Y directions, as well as the left click because we specified that channel for the left button which you could do for the right button or the wheel as well. And then after the mouse in operator, we have a math operator that's just modifying the output of the mouse in operator. And then we have the lag operator that is just kind of dampening the output of our mouse and our math operators so that we have some decay and some growth when we click on the mouse button. So these three chops are basically combining to feed into the parameters of our sphere. Our sphere is connecting to a geometry operator that is preparing our sphere to be rendered. And then we have a camera shining light onto that geometry. And then we have a camera that is observing our geometry. We have a light that is shining light onto our geometry. And then we have a render operator that is taking all of these operators together and rendering everything in the background. So that's how you use the mouse in operator under chops to actually produce output in Touch Designer so that we can have a shape moving like this sphere right here.